Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, uh, we're going back to Niger uh, in this video and uh, basically we're going to explore the the new Niger, the Niger without France around and see what's up you know, in this country. And I can tell you monthly, there's a massive reduction of articles regarding Niger ever since you know, France uh, redraw his ambassador out of Niger. So uh, that's very, very interesting. It's like, you know, the media, the mainstream media, you know, as long as the Europeans or the West is not involved, suddenly there's no articles about it, you no, know, or very few. So anyway, uh, the French ambassador to Niger has landed in Paris. You know, as per the last video that you probably may or may not have watched uh the france have actually uh ordered you no know, macron have ordered the ambassador to niger to return to france and they declare uh the official withdrawal of france from niger entirely so the military is still there but they will be you no know, they are already now in the preparation to withdraw by the end of this year and the ambassador is immediately taken back because he has been eating too much military ration and uh very poor him I hope it helps him to slim down. Uh, but you no, know, given the photo that I'm seeing here, I'm not sure if this is a recent one or is a no. Maybe it's an old photo. No, uh, maybe he might slim down. Maybe it's not. You no, know, military ration is actually quite horrible to eat. Anyway, he has landed in Paris after weeks of tension, and basically, the French Foreign Minister Catherine Calona, Calona, uh, has a met with this ambassador Sylvain Ite. Uh, to thank him and his team for his work in the service of the country under difficult conditions. So, uh, Ite left with six colleagues. So, basically, there's only seven people in the embassy, apparently, eating uh, combat rations at around 4 a.m. And uh, so, based on diplomatic source telling uh, AFP. So, um, so, I was wondering whether he actually left and uh, we can now confirm that he actually has left Niger and Macron, uh, no, very honest. You no, know, he he meant what he said. So, oh, this is the wrong, wrong one, wrong one. So yeah. So then after that, so um, so the mom the as the French left and they are no longer caring about the security situation within Niger. Um, the Niger junta have to deal with the military or the jihadist situation that's happening uh, that is uh, plaguing the Sahel region. So immediately on the very same day uh, of the, I think two days later, actually not the same day, but two days later after the ambassador have landed in France, uh, a dozen uh, Niger soldiers was killed after hundreds of armed insurgents on motorcycle attacked the uh, Niger troops. Seven soldiers were killed in combat while five others died in an accident while they are driving to reinforce the unit. So this this uh, marks the first uh, casualty, the first blood of Niger soldiers in their new beginning. So it was it seems like a quite a bloody start. And um and this attack is not it has been done again. So this roaming uh roaming uh, jihadists uh, again attack and this time around they are fighting with uh, more prepared Niger forces uh, 29 soldiers were reportedly killed uh, in attack by uh, jihadists which actually caused the country to declare a three day of national mourning uh, so apparently according to the report uh, the, the jihadists are using improvised explosive devices coming Kaze vehicles uh, where they, are, they have more than a hundred uh, terrorists in this grouping so uh, two soldiers were seriously wounded several dozen terrorists were also killed so um, so I so I'm not sure where the 29 come from uh, I, I actually don't see the 29 inside the article but no so anyway the this is also you no know, being fought near the border of Mali uh, clearly all, all these regions between the African countries don't really have very clear borders despite the lines in maps. Uh, anyone can just cross across all these borders easily because there's no fences. And um, so the so the the Niger forces uh, are conducting military operations to neutralize the threat of Islamic State in this area but they then got attacked by 
possibly jihad, um, Islamic State themselves or other jihadist groups. So they did in, intercept some uh, communications uh, among the terrorists. Uh, they they were they forced to withdraw, and um, they say that based on this uh, intercept of these radio communications, they realized that these attackers benefited from outside expertise. So the Ministry of uh, Niger did not mention anything about uh, what, who are these outside expertise. And uh, as I did mention before, France leaving you know, the, uh, the Sahel region just so simply, it does, does, it does feel a bit weird. And uh, I, I wouldn't doubt that there might be a possibility that this jihadist group might be supported by French but they could also be supported by the americans but the the thing is the french has left that makes the american support a bit uh hard, harder to 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 reconcile you know, why would the americans continue to ask the jihadists to attack or even give them a aid in terms of intelligence perhaps the jihadists have their own aims they attack uh, they they want to do whatever they want to do but why the americans would want to help them the only so the only one that have motivation, I would think that it is the French. So we do not sure. Uh, would it be? Could it be the Russians? But I don't think the Russians uh, play these games. You know, Russians don't like to deal with jihadists because of their experience with the Chechens. So um, we shall have to continue continue to monitor and see. You know, who is behind uh, the direction of all these the jihadists that is actually roaming the Sahel? Because with the French away. The, the the hypothesis of the Americans behind the the you know, the support of all these jihadists is now going to be tested. So let's see. And uh, this uh so going into the diplomatic realm, uh, Niger have this uh this this one article that is very interesting. Uh, so this is the this is the foreign uh minister uh that was rejected the 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 permit you know, to speak at the United Nations of Niger. And uh, his name is uh, Bakari Yao Sagare. And anyway, the, he he met with uh, the Sudan uh, foreign ministry people. And basically, they have agreed that uh, Niger has affirmed its readiness to cooperate with Sudan to, to retrieve assets stolen by mercenaries aligned with the Rapid Support Forces. So uh, in if you do not know who is the Rapid Support Forces, uh, you then you probably did not watch my Sudan reports. So Sudan is currently in a civil war between the government forces, the government military, and the RSF, the Rapid Support Forces. So uh, this, so Rapid Support Forces is uh something something like a militia, but no well funded uh over oversized militia that is you previously no participated in the liberation you know, of Sudan and uh, they shared uh, powers with the military with the military of course holding official uh, status you know, that whereas the RSF is a bit like a not here not there and they, they distinctly wear different color uniforms RSF wear desert colors whereas the, the military wear green and uh, yeah which is, doesn't fit well into the desert so basically uh, this is very interesting because uh, for Niger to want to cooperate with the official Sudan government, uh, which is the military side instead of the RSF side, signals that this, all these cool, uh, all these cool, you know, the Mali, Burkina Faso, now Niger, might have alignment with, might, this is not confirmed, but might have alignment with, uh, they are on the same side of the Sudan uh, military government and uh, I think that is uh, something to take note uh, we shall continue to monitor and see if that's the case the, because no we do not know who is siding the military and who is siding the RSF uh, in Sudan so with this we can at, at least kind of align a bit and uh, to kind of see that uh, oh maybe the the military in Sudan is actually aligned along with the Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. And maybe this also means Russia. So, because uh, there's all this talk about Russia uh, backing Mali and Burkina Faso, and uh, Russia is not, uh, not 
no not obvious in Niger. Uh, the Americans are more obvious in Niger. So you know there is all this you know undercurrent that's currently happening that we need to keep track and monitor. And I think this article is very very interesting. So uh, so uh, so among the RSF forces that was uh, in Khartoum, there's a group of uh, Niger Arab minority uh, went into doing uh, pillages of residences and. Uh, and occupation of civilian uh, residents so basically they are terrorists uh, in that sense or criminals and uh, they observe hundreds of these individuals crossing back into niger so this is why uh, the sudanese uh, official government or the military gov government actually asked niger for help for corro corroboration or uh, collaboration to see uh, whether they can recover some of these vehicles or items that may have entered niger but clearly you no know, niger is not going to be in the position to help the this is just a formality and this uh because what can the niger government do you know the this they are they are their hands are already tied uh, with so many things happening so many jihadist groups around the sahel they are unable to you know even take these groups down know how to track down unknown criminals or terrorists that entered into the border you know they might have be, they might go anywhere within niger so but but this 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 is why you know this is important in terms of the diplomatic uh significance rather than the actual thing that they are planning to do so um and and then another weird stuff that uh in this uh beginning of this niger uh independence i would say you know the independence of niger from france influence is algeria so algeria made this very big statement uh, in t on tv so and uh, they declared that Niger has accepted uh, the Algerian offer to mediate in this political crisis. Uh, very, very good news, right? No, then the, they said Algeria uh, received Niger's official notification of its acceptance of uh, the president's... Uh, this is the president of uh, Algeria. Mediation initiative and uh, the ministry added the statement is read out on national TV. So the acceptance of the Algerian initiative strengthened the prospect of a political uh, solution to this crisis and it will pave, pave the way towards a peaceful solution to the crisis. And uh, it's in the interest of the entire region. So, and uh, as such, the president said that his uh, foreign minister will be visiting Naime as soon as possible in the aim of launching this discussion with all stakeholders. So, very good news. And I saw this news is uh, really widely spread and reported across multiple media uh, outlets. But Niger was surprised to read that it had accepted uh, Algeria's mediation offer. So the military authorities denied that they have actually accepted a six-month transition period that was proposed by Algeria. So the according to the the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and Nigerians abroad, they, they were surprised to read on social networks and a certain media a communique from the Algerian government stating Niger had accepted Algeria's mediation, which proposed a six-month transition to the military. They're surprised. He said that the duration of this uh, transition will be determined by a national forum. It is not up to a foreign power to decide for Niger what is their you know, transition back to civilian rule. And uh, so this is very, very embarrassing and very, very awkward for Algeria. And this, this just marks the start of this very weird beginning of this uh, the Frenchless uh era of Niger and anyway this is a quick update in terms of the situation with Niger and a very very uh, weird situation if you ask me uh, we have we have this uh, total miscommunication with Algeria we have uh, Niger uh, marking is friendship in a way uh, at least the at least they still show that they have diplomatic relationship with the Sudan's uh, military government and we also see that France is France is out, but the jihadists are still operating with outside help. So anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next update.